people, Zarth Warren up here, and welcome to episode 46 of Fears Right Ace Attorney. Last time we explored Gant's office, and this time I'm gonna actually prove that so I got it because I just remembered as soon as I ended this video, we have finger dusting sets, and we have to get the fingerprints. Detective Gumshoe, I'd like you to have a look at this. Hey, I know what that is! So you wanna take some fingerprints? That's a great idea, Detective. Alright, go to town! Sheesh! What are, you, what are you doing? Why are you sticking out your hand like that? Go ahead! Take my fingerprints! Um, it's not your fingerprints you want to take. Huh? Come on! Come on, this isn't the time for jokes. We're talking about that closet guy in the safe. Oh! <laughs> I knew that! The one with the hamper eye, right? Jeez, you want to just have the humor? So you think that they... It, it would probably be a better idea for them to just play... Oh, closet has been added to your evidence list. Like, and then you could do the... And then you could basically use it on the, on the closet. Okay, Mr. Wright, let's check for prints. Sprinkle the powder, finger the powder in the cloth. Then we'll take the diamonds into the prints, blow the rest away. What are you, my mom? Don't, I don't want to be told a million times. All right, let's get this over. Emma is not a no, is no, is not mom material. She is not mommy Karumi. The middle finger. Spread the powder with my mouse. I have technology on my side, so I can just do this with ease. Spread all that powder around. All the powder. This is technology. We have technology. And the print belongs to none other than Emma. That's right. Emma's fingerprint is here. No, how can this be? What are Emma's fingerprints doing here? Hey, you found a match! Whose fingerprints were they? Huh? Oh, uh, it seems the prints are too old. They aren't clear enough to get a match. Oh, that's too bad. I thought they'd be dark prints. <laughs> hey, pst, hey you, over here. What's going on here? What? Why are the kids' fingerprints doing inside the chief's safe? Don't ask me. Let's just keep this information my own for now. Here, maybe you should hold on to this. Triple cloth folded in and added to the court record. Well, was I of any help? Of course. Thanks to your ID card, we were able to get some hard evidence. Now, that's not very kind, is it? In other words, if it wasn't for his ID card, he would have been useless. Isn't that right, you in the coat? Eek! To keep that! We didn't think you'd be back so soon. Fortunately, I'm a man who believes in signs. As I was walking to my meeting, I happened to look out a window and saw a stray dog run into a pole. Cause then I thought of a certain detective. <laughs> it's just like whenever I would see a stick in the mud on... Whenever I'd see a stick in some mud, I would always think of man and would always call him up. Or whenever I saw a baseball player getting aggressive with a bat, I would always think of Blazy. Do you mean Mimisa? Now then, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you all to leave. Y yes, sir. Sorry. Oh, you in the coat. Misa! Drop off your ID card on the way out. You won't be needing it anymore. But what, sir? Now get out! And then Gumshoe just pulls out his gun and starts piping on Gant. <laughs> Literally, I love how Gant is just the, the kind of guy where he has balls of steel, where he's not afraid of any, he, where he's not afraid of anyone really. He goes, basic, Gumshoe, can you apply his gun with ease and just fire off a few rounds? And I mean, sure Gumshoe would get arrested, but I mean, if anything, prison would be a step up for Gumshoe. I mean, think about it. He'd probably be getting better food. <laughs> And, and actual heat and electricity. <laughs> but then again, considering that Gant probably hung out with Manfred and Blake, would probably ha was probably at least on good ter at least on good res good acquaintance terms with Manfred and Blaze of all people, he, he would have to have that sort of caliber. <laughs> yes, sir. We'll be on our way too then. 
Wait, you, the one without the spiky hair. Don't go yet. But me, sir? I'd like a word with you. But sir, I I'm not a licensed scientific investigator yet. <laughs> you with the spiky hair, you're free to go. But <laughs> Mr. Wright. Look, pal, if I told you once, I told you that guys. The chief's office is off limits. But no, you just had to go sneak in there like that, didn't you? I thought you said you didn't care anymore if you were fired. Yeah, but if I knew I'd be, it'd be like this. I never would have said it. Now that I've seen the evidence Chief Garrett was hiding in his office, I think I finally started to get the picture. It's hard to believe anyone would keep quiet about this after all this time. Anyways, you listen to me? <laughs> I'm going to try to smooth things over with the chief again. Later, pal. Tommy, you broke into my office! How am I supposed to forgive that? <laughs> what if you came across Blazy's porno stash that I've been storing here? And then Blaze just called. I heard there were people in my you know, I heard there were people in my office. You know, if that if they touch my porno stash, then I'm having to keep there. Blazing, why do you keep going your boat wanting to store your porno stash in my office? I mean, don't you have one in your space? I keep telling you, my porno stash over here is full, and I like variety, you see! Okay, th this is getting weird. <laughs> God help us all when I get to investigations, too. After that, I heard from Emma. She said the police wants to ask her some questions, so she'll be busy for the rest of the day. February 24th, Detention Center, and I forgot to turn my timer on! I see. So the chief asked Emma to come in for questioning. It's no use thinking about it. Tomorrow's the final day in court. I'm committed to doing everything I can to defend you, which is why I'm here. But I've already told you all I can. What you've told me over these past couple of days is absolutely nothing. Not a single useful thing. Really? I believe I did mention something quite important. Something I told you right at the beginning. I said that I was the one who stabbed Detective Goodman. You know, I think I finally figured it out. Who is your your hiding behind those words? Mia did a good job mentoring you. I'm rather jealous. It seems Edgeworth was right. Edgeworth? Once you're convinced that you know something, no one can persuade you otherwise. Thick-headed is the term he used, I believe. Now is my chance to get her to tell me the rest of the story. Keeping quiet. I have to admit I was more than a little perplexed at first. You insisted you did it, yet there was no incriminating evidence. That's when it hit me. It's not that you're unwilling to tell the truth, it's that you're incapable of doing so because of a certain individual. What an intriguing notion. A certain individual, you say. So you think I'm protecting this person? Protecting? No, I think afraid of is more like it. Don't judge me. Gant is like Monokuma. He may seem innocent, but he is terrifying to the core. If I'm not mistaken, the person in question may have persuaded you to silence. For argument's sake, Mr. Wright, who, what, who may I ask is this person you're speaking of? The one I am supposedly so frightened of? What is this person's name? Mike Meekins! The person whom you fear is this! To be honest, there's someone a bit scarier. Who would that be? When you, why you, of course. Me? Yes, you seriously believe what you're saying, don't you? Now that's scary. I know. You seem to have the markings of a criminal in you. What with all that fallacious accusations? Care to spend tonight in the next cell? If you ask me, you're scary. You're the scary one. I had to do that. I had to do that for once. That's actually a good one. Emma, Emma's scarier. Chief Gant. Well, this guy. Mr. Wright, you are addressing the chief prosecutor. Do not forget your place. I tell you, she's not quite ready to spill the beans. My apologies. Could you please tell me a bit more about the circumstances? Damon Gant. We were partners until two years ago. I respect him as a detective, assuming he is respectable. Assuming he's, he is respectable, then tell me something. Why would he try to hide his crimes? His crimes? Both you and Edgeworth will be brought before a board of inquiry for what you did. Specifically, hiding and forging evidence. Of course, these are serious offenses. Why is it though that the chi that Chief Gant's name was never mentioned? Chief Gant? Edgeworth didn't know the truth behind the forgery. The only party who could have possibly inter investigated that evidence was 
me. I had access because I was second in command of that investigation. Yes, you, but also one other, Damon Gant. If you intend to accuse Chief Gant, you will need more than just words. Show me proof that Chief Gant falsified evidence in that case. Granted, the Triple Cloth is actually the bigger one of the two, but the unstable jar is what we have to do. I found this as safe in the Chief's office. This jar piece, and this Triple Cloth. Yeah, you can present both of them. Just want to be on the safe side. Do you know what these are? They're pieces of evidence from the SL9 incident. Why? The person concealing evidence was known than Chief Gant himself. Now tell me, why are you taking all the blame for him? Touche, Mr. Wright. It's all as, it's as you surmised. I cannot disobey the Chief's orders. If it means being found guilty for murder. Why not? Calm down, Mr. Wright. You can't possibly expect me to be to, able to tell you that. Three days ago, I had no choice but to cooperate in the murder of Detective Goodman. Or perhaps I should say, follow orders. Yes, there's more accurate than cooperate. Orders. Although I can't tell you the details, I can say that I was given an order that day. I need you to dispose of Bruce Goodman's body. You'll find it inside the trunk of Miles Edgeworth's car. I broke it open with a crowbar. <laughs> Just as I suspected. Despite what everyone believes, you are not the one who murdered Detective Goodman. Correct. I was trying to take the body out of Edward's car. The trunk was broken. I discovered that murder weapon while inspecting the body. The, mur the murder weapon? You mean Edward's knife? No. When I found the body, this was the knife stuck in it. The knife from the SL9 is it. Joe Killer Joe Dark's knife. I couldn't just leave it. Leave that knife in him. So I took it out and stabbed him with another knife. That would be Edward's knife. That's right. Even though he was already dead, my hands were shaking at the thought of stabbing him. That's why I ended up cutting my hand. And the and that's the reason for the badge on your right hand. Yes, it seems that I got blown the victim's shoe as well. And then she saw me just as I plunged that knife in. The star. Why did you need to hide Dark's knife so badly? So it wouldn't be linked? It took a lot of work to finally close the dark case two years ago. It was over with. I didn't even ever want to be it to be open again. My intent was to prevent that by whatever means possible. So you hid Dark's knife. The weapon used to stab detective was evidence in the Joe Dark case. If word got out, which it would, the reporters would have fought, would have a field day with that. <laughs> So you wrapped the knife in your scarf and hid it? In Edward's exhaust pipe? Right. And I called my sister. To tell her what happened, and to ask her to hide the knife that was inside my muffler. You asked Emma? I didn't want anyone on the force to know about this. That would explain why Emma was so, is so confident. About Lana's innocence. Speaking of phone calls, I had a bad feeling about one of them that day. A bad feeling? The truth is, after I received those orders from Chief Gantz, the first thing I did was make a phone call. A phone call to Patrolman Jake Marshall. To Marshall? Why on earth would you call him? The lead investigator for the SL9 incident had been murdered. I wanted the fact to be kept hidden, and I needed help. He was the only other person I could trust. Or at least, I thought I could trust him at the time. However, it seems that after I spoke with him, he went off on an escapade of his own. Oh, you mean... Not wanting the same, wanting the case to die, he decided to take things into his own hands. He disguised himself as Officer Goodman and tried to steal the evidence. He had already stolen the ID card, but it seems he still hadn't made up his mind to break into the evidence room. After my phone call, any remaining doubts he had must have disappeared. So your phone call caused an incident in the evidence room. I'm afraid that's all I can tell you. But Lana! You've earned my re you earned my respect, Mr. Wright, both as a defense attorney and an investigator. Now please, don't pursue this any further in court tomorrow. Tomorrow's trial. There's only one way to drive out Lana's demons. I've gotta to get to the bottom of everything. Detective Goodman's real murderer. 
which is plain a fact that's plainly obvious. I mean, really. Why, why are you even trying to, to hide it? I mean, really, it's obvious that Gant's the murderer at this point. I went down in the cheese office two years ago. To be continued. N no, I'm not going to do that. Okay, February 25th, 9.47 a.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. This is the defendant lobby, all right, but there's no defendant. I've been trying to reach Lana all morning. Where could she be? And where's Emma, for that matter? It almost seems as if something's been happening. Something's been happening behind the scenes. Edgeworth, knowing you, you've already figured it out. Who the owner of the seven 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 ID number is? Well, I have a pretty strong hunch. Looks like I'm not the only one who's figured it out. You know, the only reason this trial didn't reach a verdict yesterday is because there was still room for doubt on this ID record. If that number does belong to whom you suspect, then no doubt will remain. After all, he hasn't been officially charged with anything. True, not yet. In any event, once all doubt has been removed from that list, I can call I can call it for a ruling. On the defendant, five minutes after the trial starts, Lana will be found guilty. But she didn't do it! I figured you'd say as much. That's why I came here, to hear what you have to say. This is the first time he's ever done something like this. Lana's hiding something, and the only way we'll ever know the truth is to draw it out of her. That truth. Everything goes back to the SL9 incident. Don't be stupid! Today is the last day of the trial! We don't have time to reminisce about the past. That depends on you. If she's found guilty, you'll lose your only chance to find out what really happened. I'll think about it. See you in court, right? This is it. If I'm ever going to find out what Chief Gant has on her, it's now. February 25th, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number 9. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Normally, this is when the prosecution puts forth its opening statement. But before that, the police chief has a proposal to make. Chief Gant? I warped in! I have teleportation power! That's what swimming does for you, Rado! Morning, folks! How are everyone doing? Hey, OG, get back at the pool yet? No, I haven't been drowning in- No, I've been drowning enough as it is in my work. Ha! Huh, that's a good one! Don't think I can top that! If you don't mind me asking, Chief, what exactly is this proposal of yours? Lana, that is to say, the defendant, has asked me if she could speak directly to the courts. She wants to do what? Haven't heard what she intends to say. I feel she should be granted her request. In the end, it should save everyone a lot of time and trouble. Go, Lana, go! What's this all about, What's this all about defendant? I'd just like to make one simple request, and I'll be finished. Well then, what's your request? Your Honor, I'd like you to put an immediate end to this trial. Huh? I confess to all charges against me. Go, Lana, go! Man, you're really doing go a good job at this, Lana! Here, have a cookie! On February 21st of this year, I murdered Detective Bruce Goodman in the underground parking lot of the prosecutor's office. No, Lana! You can't! Your Honor, the defendant's claim does not charge the, does not change the defense's plea. In that case, Mr. Wright, I no longer require your services. But Lana! You haven't even paid Phoenix yet! Your Honor, I hereby forfeit my right to an attorney. The prosecution may lack direct evidence against me, but it has sufficiently proven its case through testimony and circumstantial evidence. I would like you to render your verdict now, if you please. Hmm, well, the defendant certainly has the right to self-representation. Her request is legally valid, although it is an unprecedented situation. Indeed, it appears there's no further need to continue this trial, even if Mr. Wright may feel otherwise. This can't be happening! It appears that the time for my verdict has arrived. The court finds the defendant... Objection! One moment, Your Honor! 
Mr. Edward, if that defendant is being is going to be charged guilty, it will be by my hand and my updated autopsy report, damn it! The prosecution has not yet proven the defendant's guilty beyond reasonable doubt. Any ruling at this stage would be certainly be premature. Come now, worthy. And you were raised by a man, eh? Shame on you, worthy. May would just be livid right now. Hell, if, if a defendant did that during May's case, he'd be doing a happy dance. I understand this is a difficult time for you, but why don't you just be a good little boy and keep your mouth shut, hmm? I'll give you a lollipop, little worthy. Hmm. I don't think I care for your tone, Chief Guy. Well, I don't think I care for your pink suit very much, but we all can't have what we want now, can we, Worthy? What? Creating another fabrication to cover up your past mistakes. Sorry, but I'm no longer the naive little boy you would have me be. With this sudden confession from the defendant, it's obvious to me that some kind of deal has been struck behind the scenes. Some kind of deal? Hmm. God help what operas do you do, Worthy? <laughs> I thought so. Your Honor, the prosecution would like to charge it to ch change its first witness. Who? Oh, to whom? As its first witness, the prosecution would like to charge Miss Emma Sky. I request the court hears her testimony. Mr. Edgeworth, I am exercising my right to self-representation. I don't think we need to ca continue. I don't care what you think, Miss Sky. The, ex the exposure of truth sometimes results in tragedy. However. No matter how tragic the truth may be, it would be an even greater tragedy to avert one's eyes from it. Very well, the court shall grant the, pro pro the prosecution's request and damage our flaring flowing mileage. What the hell? That's okay, is that's okay with you, right, Chief Ken? Worthy. You'll live to regret this. Mark my words. Miss Emma Sky, please take the stand. Looks like Edgeworth has decided to take the horse by the reins. Now then, witness, please state your name and occupation. Um, but my name is Emma. Emma Sky. Edward, these are like, Oh my gosh! <laughs> Something has happened! Someone finally said their name and occupation! Thank you, witness! Thank you! And then Emma, Edward starts hugging Emma. <laughs> and she's like, and she's just doing the fist like, Yes! I please, Mr. Edward! My occupation, I'm Lana's little sister, and I want to be a scientific investigator. Two years ago, you encountered the serial killer Joe Dark of the Joe Dark Killing. Is this correct? Yes. I'm trying my hardest to forget about that, though. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to recall those events one more time. Mr. Edward, please remember the trial concerns the murder of Detective Goodman. It's an, it's an incident that was resolved two years ago really all that relevant? Yes, it most certainly is. W well, okay then. He sure gave in fast. Now, please testify about what happened to you two years ago. A trip to yesteryear has finally begun. It's bound to lead to the truth behind this trial. Two years ago. I was waiting in my sister's office that day. A man came running in and took me hostage. Neil Marshall rescued me, but I'll never forget what I saw in that instant. The man raised up his knife and, and stabbed Mr. Marshall in the chest. It's a good thing you weren't harmed. I passed out. You don't remember much. That's understandable. However, please tell me, Mr. Edgeworth, what does this testimony have to do with Detective Goodman's murder? That will soon be on my pant, Donna. You've got to admire him for his courage, considering he has no evidence. Very well. The defense may begin cross examination. Like, you're going to speak, Phoenix? That's pretty much your thing! Two years ago. Two years ago, the defendant was a detective at the police department, correct? Yes. She was second in command under Chief G Detective Gantz. My sister. She was the best detective ever. And then Gantz, he's just clearly like, Well... <clears throat> Well, Emma can't say I'm I'm not hurt by that comment. I mean, I, I, I tried my best, Emma. I, I really did. Yes, I remember. Chief Detective Guy and Miss Sky used to be quite the pair. 
I believe they share the same opus. That's right! I'd always sit it at my sister's desk. And she ended up playing that organ! Which... which... I wanted to play it that day too! In that case, Emma's dream came true just the previous day. The police department and the Rose Cruise office had a ceremony that day. Well, the problem that they need for to dinner after she finished her work. A man? Yes, Joe Dark! He was a... A serial killer! Joe Dark was brought in for questioning on the day of that ceremony. We were desperate to get anything on him that would lead to an arrest. When he saw his chance, he fled the room, right? Of all being in the room, Doc proceeded to take the elevator. He must have been in a panic because the elevator was going up. Then he ran into Sky and Gan's office. There was a lot of noise going from outside, so I opened up the door to have a look. That's when I saw him. Your Marshal. What was the prosecutor? What was the prosecutor doing there? That day, there were two people present, present during Doc's questioning. Detective Gap Damon Gant and Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Gant was there too? Neil Marshall had just received the King of Prosecutor's Award. Young and dedicated, he went straight to the questioning room after that ceremony. I assume that would also be why he was the first to run after Doc. When Doc grabbed me, I, I thought I was a good guy's dead. And that's when Prosecutor Marshall came running in. I... I don't clearly remember what happened then, but... Can you tell us about that? Mr. Marshall jumped on Dark! Just then, the lights went out! The lights? It was just about this time of year. There was a terrible storm going on and lightning struck nearby. So the electricity went out. Wait a minute. If it was, a, was pitch dark in that room, you shouldn't have been able to see anything, right? Right, but just then lightning flashed again outside. That suddenly flash, that sudden flash left an unforgivable image of the scene in my mind. I see. I told the detective about what I saw then. The detective? Yes, Detective Goodman. He was in charge of the of the case. <laughs> detective Bruce Goodman. The victim? Hear more. So you spoke with Detective Goodman about this two years ago? Yes. That's what's so scary about this trial. And you told Detective Goodman about what you saw? Yes, but at the time, the words just wouldn't come out. And that's why I drew a picture. A picture? Yes, I think she mentioned that before. Well, Mr. Wright, have you heard enough? Ask about the picture. Because we have the picture. This picture of the witness drew. I believe it has a very important meaning. But the list of evidence I, I was given two years ago didn't contain a picture. Witness, would you mind if we address this statement to your testimony? Yes, Your Honor. No, it hasn't, because we have evidence list. Mr. Edgeworth, this little girl put all her heart into drawing that picture. And yet you still insist on denying its existence? Huh? Stop being that to be a monster, right? The world has done that enough already. Hey, I'm not the bad guy. All I'm saying is that as the prosecutor for that case, I wasn't handed such a picture. That may well be, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Behold! This is the evidence list for the SL9 incident. Please turn it over, Your Honor. Turn it over. Turn it... Oh! What's this? Yes! What is it? Hey! That's it! That's the picture I drew! Indeed. Two men appear to be wrestling here. What's the meaning of this? What are you doing with that list? Me? Only the prostitute in charge should have access to that list. Huh? These lists? They're... They are different from each other. What? It would appear, Mr. Edgeworth, that the evidence list you were handed two years ago was incomplete. These two lists fit together to form one. You can see the marks here where they were torn apart from each other. So you see, Mr. Edgeworth, it's quite obvious what happened. Two years ago, only half of the evidence in that case ever reached you. What? What? Order, order. Who would have thought that the picture would have been drawn on the back of the list? That was handed to Detective Goodman in the questioning room. Wait a minute. 
If this list was torn in half, then that means... Your Honor? Are you alright, Mr. Wright? Your eyes are bulging from your head! If this evidence list was torn in half, then there might be more of the drawing on the back of Mr. Edgeworth's list! Yes, that's quite conceivable, Mr. Edgeworth. It's possible. Let's see! Mm! Mm! Edge, the Edgeworth become constipated? I know what Edgeworth is upset about, but Edgeworth sounds so constipated! Look at that! Mm! Like he's trying to push, like he's trying to pass a stone! Is something wrong? Do you even have to ask? <laughs> Sorry, Your Honor. There is something going on the back of my list. That is... It's that thing! It haunts my dreams! <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, for those of you who don't know, essentially the Blue Badger is... The Ace Attorney is basically... If Mon what Monokuma is the Danganronpa series, the Blue Badger is the Ace Attorney series. And the Blue Badger hasn't tried to kill anyone. Actually, at least not in his base form. We'll get into that in a later game. But that's the, the thing! That thing was that was Nancy Mammon's room. Apparently the head of criminal affairs used this for his blueprints. Well, I guess he was out of scrap paper. The Evans list has been updated. Very well. Witness? Will you please testify about this picture you drew two years ago? Huh? Uh oh, yes, sir, Your Honor. What's wrong with Emma? She seemed to be thinking about something when she saw that picture. Emma's picture. This is the picture I drew two years ago. The flash of lightning was so bright, all I could see were shadows. After that, I must have fainted. This picture says exactly what I saw in that instant. To think a flash of lightning could burn such an image into your mind. Thanks to, thanks to that, though, she was able to show us exactly what she saw. Well, I don't see any contradiction here. This clearly shows Joe Dark about to murder prosecutor Neil Marshall. The defense may now begin cross-examination. Which we will be doing in the next episode. I really appreciate that you stuck around to watch this episode. You're a great viewer. I hope you come back for the next one. If you like this video, like, subscribe, comment, share, do whatever you want. And with that, I'll see you later. Bye.